Welcome to Until Saturday with a special YouTube exclusive edition talking about Michigan football, the Connor Stallions scandal, and a draft notice of allegations that the Wolverines have received. I'm joined here by Austin Meek, the Athletics Michigan writer. Austin, you've been covering the story for a year now at this point, along with some other stuff that's been going on there. To start, what does Michigan have and how is this different than the other NCAA situation they're dealing with, with recruiting? Yeah. So there was two separate NCAA investigations going on involving Michigan. First one involved allegations that Michigan had impermissible contact with recruits during the COVID-19 dead period. That case has been mostly resolved except for Jim Harbaugh's part of it. Michigan reached a negotiated resolution with the NCAA that included three years of probation. But then there's the second NCAA investigation involving the Connor Stallions uh, scouting and sign stealing allegations. That one is not as far along in the process. So just on Sunday, Michigan received a draft of a notice of allegations that basically is the NCAA laying out what it thinks happened, what uh, violations it wants to pursue. And then there's a period of negotiation to try to resolve that before an infractions hearing. But I think the big headline from that was Shrone Moore's name showing up in the draft of the allegations that that wasn't known publicly that Shrone Moore was going to be in there. He's facing allegations that he deleted some text messages with Connor Stallions. So clearly um, this notice of allegations includes some things that um, potentially could be problematic for Michigan. Right. And this isn't the NCAA laying down the penalties right now or what they're doing. This is the start of a process to kind of figure out what to do. Like you mentioned, the recruiting uh, investigation had a negotiated resolution. Um, there were many people who didn't cooperate with the Connor Stallions investigation. So that's not going to, they're not going to negotiate their part of it. But what does Michigan do from here at this point? And what's kind of the next step in all of this? Yeah, I mean, I would imagine Michigan is going to want to do whatever it can to mitigate whatever penalties the NCAA is going to hand down, even though there, as you mentioned, there were people who did not cooperate with this. Connor Stallions did not cooperate. Jim Harbaugh did not fully cooperate to the extent that the NCAA wanted. Uh, but Michigan as an institution, I think, is going to try to present uh, as much cooperation as they can in hopes that that they can soften the blow. That was what happened with the, the previous NCAA infractions case. Michigan self-imposed some penalties uh, to mitigate uh, the NCAA penalties. Something similar could happen here. I really think Michigan's uh, priority in all of this is going to be to try to uh, try to avoid penalties that are going to have adverse effects on on the team going forward. Something like a postseason ban uh, would be really tough to swallow for for players in the program who weren't weren't part of this. So I think that's what Michigan is going to try as hard as they possibly can to avoid. Yeah, the the NCAA has made a point in in recent years. They're trying not to do postseason bans anymore because they're trying not to penalize the players, some of which weren't even around when certain things happened. They're trying to do a lot of retroactive penalties, show causes, fines, and stuff like that. So specific to Sharon Moore, I mean, obviously, Jesse Minter, Connor Stallions, Jim Harbaugh, seems like they didn't cooperate and will probably be hit pretty hard with some of that stuff. But Sharon Moore is obviously the head coach now. Um, you mentioned he was he's been alleged to have deleted text messages um, with Connor Stallions, but those messages were then recovered and submitted. So what do you kind of make of the whole part around Sharon Moore? Yeah, the, the allegation with Sharon Moore does seem to involve how he responded once the the scandal became public as opposed to his involvement previous to that. We don't know yeah. what's in those text messages. Uh, so that obviously would, would tell us a lot. The fact that Sharon Moore had a level two uh, charge in this draft of allegations, you know, if there was something really egregious in those text messages, he probably would have had a level one charge. Uh, yeah. But still, like, it's certainly not, uh, the appearance of it certainly is not good that the person who's the head coach now uh, allegedly deleted those messages and then they had to be recovered. The NCAA has them now. Uh, I, I remember from being 
you know, in the middle of that, there certainly was a lot of, um, I think, just sort of panic you know, when that story broke. And I'm, I'm sure that that was probably the feeling within the program as well. Uh, but a lot of these allegations do seem to involve how people in the program responded after this became public, including Chris mm -hmm. Partridge, who got fired as linebackers coach back in November. Uh, and I think what will probably be really the determining factor in all of this is, is there anything in what the NCAA uncovered that would link any of these coaches um, to having knowledge about what was happening and that rules were being broken when they were being broken. I don't think that that anything has come out to allege that at this point. Right. Partridge was because he allegedly told players to mislead the NCAA about certain things. And so let's go to Connor Stallions um, reports that the NCAA has confirmed it was, him on the sideline at Central Michigan, Michigan State game. I think anybody who has a pair of eyes could tell. Um, it would have been pretty easy for Central Michigan to be like, no, that's not him. That's Johnny, the equipment guy. And so if that is the case, if, if it is him on the sideline there, um, as it appears to be, I mean, what, what do we think about that? Kind of going back to that crazy, one of the craziest parts of this whole story. Yeah. I mean, some of this stuff, you do just have to laugh. I mean, it, it is, it, there's a farcical element to all of this. And probably the most farcical part of this whole story is Connor Stallion showing up in like the cheesiest disguise he could possibly be wearing on the sideline at Central Michigan. I mean, there's going to be fallout uh, for Central Michigan on that. And it seems may already be happening there. There's going to be consequences for Michigan. Um, it, it's, in some ways it's laughable in some ways it's serious right like that would be a, a problem for the sport if if you had uh, people from one staff infiltrating the sideline of of another program um you know this this is i think first and foremost a connor stallions problem like um i think that we're going to find out that connor stallions was doing a lot of things uh within the program and certainly was not being supervised to the degree that he should have been and that i think that's where it's a problem for michigan is to what extent is the NCAA going to say, hey, Michigan, like, if you didn't know about this, you should have known about this. Like, he's your mm -hmm. employee. He's your staffer. Uh, it's the responsibility of the head coach and, and everybody running the program to be aware of what people are doing. And something this egregious for Connor Stallions to show up <laughs> in a disguise on the sideline of another program, like, that is the kind of thing that a program that was monitoring itself effectively should probably be able to figure out. And clearly Michigan didn't. And I think that's where it becomes a problem for Michigan. Showing up on the sideline like that is one of the most brazen examples of cheating that I've ever seen. He could have just bought a ticket and sat in the crowd like he, he or his people did at plenty of other games. But to go so far as to be on the sideline the Friday night, Michigan State Central Michigan game, Michigan plays the next day. He's shaved by then. Just just wild. And so yeah. we've got this Netflix documentary coming out at the end of the month. I am convinced there's going to be nothing of note in it. Connor Stallions loves Michigan. He does not want to hurt Michigan. He's not going to reveal his secret plans that make Michigan look like they get in trouble. Am I off base here? Or what do you what do you expect from this? No, I think you're right. I mean, my big question with the documentary has been how hard is Connor Stallions going to get pushed? You know, how, how how much is he going to get his feet held to the fire in terms of what he did or how much is he going to be able to present kind of a sympathetic portrait of, of what he did? So I'm really curious about that. I, I agree with you, Chris. I don't I don't expect him to come out and burn the place down at Michigan. Uh, he clearly loves Michigan and wants to protect Michigan. Uh, at at uh, personal cost to himself, right? Um, not cooperating with the investigation, like it's going to be really hard for him to work in in football ever again. Yeah. Uh, so this is really his opportunity to come out and um, say whatever he wants to say in his defense because he hasn't he hasn't spoken publicly outside of one statement since he uh, since he resigned. So yeah. I I would expect it probably to be a somewhat sympathetic portrait of Connor Stallions and. You know, whether that's what 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 you want or whether that's the full story, uh, we'll we'll see. But I do think it'll be I mean, it'll be riveting, riveting to watch the timing of it. I'm sure Netflix people were high fiving when that news came out on Sunday because it's it's wonderful timing for them from a marketing perspective. So uh, certainly we'll be uh, we'll we'll be highly anticipated uh, and a, a must watch documentary when that comes out. 
Yeah, a lot more on this. The story obviously isn't going away anytime soon. Still a long process to play out. And that documentary at the end of the month. Austin, thanks for joining us. And everybody, thank you for watching.